Welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you a template for managing your projects with Excel. Now this is not supposed to replace MS projects. If you have that, that's definitely the best to use. But this will enable you to use Excel with some of these abilities to manage your projects in a pretty nice way. Okay, so what do we have here? So basically there's two sheets the project sheets and a parameter sheets, which is very limited in what it has, but of course this is just a starting point for a template. You can build on it and improve it and make it something bigger and better. But if we're looking at the basics, what we have here. So first of all, the project name. So by the way, the way this built, all of the orange cells are the ones that you're supposed to key in the data. And so this should be orange as well. And all of the blue columns are what is calculated automatically. You don't need to touch them. All right, so we got the project name. In this case, I just took some tasks of, for a wooden plan. Um, this is the start date when you want to start the project. And this is connected to the first task. You see, this is connected here. It's also connected to the date over here that you're going to see. And today, basically the date that you want to see, you see I took a futuristic date, but essentially you could have this as the formula today, and this will be updated every day. So it's up to you. You can either have this as a dynamic field or a you know, fixed field that you set up whenever you want to take a look at the schedule, because this, this field has an impact on the required uh, column and the steps column and I'll get that in a few minutes so back to what you need to set up so on the orange columns you have the task number which basically you can build this however you want integers or uh, you know combination like 1.2 2.3 whatever you want uh, if you want to connect between different tasks then you have the task name and the percentage it was completed uh, up to the point that you're checking it. Um, so in the in this one, I used the data validation and make sure it's a decimal between zero and one, since I can't I don't want to allow negative completion or above one. Then you have this option, which is a manual schedule for the start and finish date. Now, obviously, the first one has to have something, even if you have uh, dependencies, which I'll show you in, a, in about a minute. So you have a start date and you have the finish date. Now, notice I'm using a function called Workday. Workday, what it does is actually it's a very nice function that only takes into account the working days. So you see this this task starts on the 3rd of January. It's a 15 day um, duration, but the finish date is the 24th, not the 18th, because it's taking into account the weekends. So I highly recommend you use that if you want to use here the manual scheduling. So whatever you put here as the manual schedule, that will impact the auto schedule over here. We'll get to that later on. And if it's empty, that means usually you have some sort of predecessor, which makes a lot of sense because usually in projects, tasks are connected. So if tasks aren't connected, that's kind of strange. You may have another one or two that are in parallel, but most of them should be connected in some way. All right, so this is, this so far was the easy part. Now we have the predecessors. Here's where you defined if you have a predecessor for this task. So you need to write which task it's connected to. What's the type? And here I'm using a uh, another data validation from the parameters sheet. Okay, this is where I set up the names. So there's the start to start, finish to start, finish to finish, and start to finish. Basically, if you're not familiar with these techniques, it just means, for example, start to start, this means that this task or the task that it's connected to and this task will start at the same time. Um, 
most common is finish to start, meaning you finished the first star, star task and now it's time for the second task. And there's the lag, which allows you to have some sort of delay between them. In this case, you can see I connected this task to the, to the uh, wedding budget as a start to start, but with a lag of one. And you can see in the auto schedule, which we'll see in about a minute how that's being done, but this one starts at the 3rd of January and it's connected start to start, so it starts at the 4th, which is one day lag. And again, for all of these, and you can see I changed uh, 4 to 3, and of course, this is dynamic. You can key in whatever you want, and you see dates will shift as you do that. Dates will shift as you change this. Okay, so this is all very dynamic. So those are the three. Now here I have the hidden columns, which are hidden because they just, you know, you don't need to see them. Basically, uh, it's pretty complicated formulas to, you know, um, make sure that all the cases are um, built properly. So in these cases, I usually have, like to have columns and not complicated formulas because it's easier to understand. So, f so let's start with um, finish to start. So if um, the type is equal, meaning if there's a, um, it's the same type that you listed over here, I'm going to take uh, the lag, I7 plus, looking for that task with a VLOOKUP. So task, let's take this one for example, sorry. So we're looking for task number one all the way from A through R and to this column because this one is supposed to be affecting the start time. These two are supposed to affect the finish time. Okay, so this basically just shows me what's supposed to be um, my start time. All right, same for here just with the uh, difference of course of looking for the finish okay here I'm looking for the start you see notice P and here I'm not looking for the finish which is R now I'm, I'm basically showing what is the new start time so it's the maximum between two of them because I'm you cannot have two types so it's a one of these or blank in the, in the case where it's a finish um, dependency. Alright, now how do I finally get the, the start and finish? So for the start, and it's still a, let's say, semi-complicated formula, but I think overall it's not that complicated. If there is a manual input, I'm going to take that in. If not, and I have an auto schedule for the start, I'm going to take this the, the start. If I don't have that, that means I don't have a manual input. I don't have a start, meaning I don't have um, a finish to start or start to start. So I'm going to take the um, finish and subtract the net, net the duration, of course, in work days. Okay, negative E7. Just like in... Um, Where is this? This case. So this case, I don't have a manual input. I don't have a start date because this is a finish to finish. I know it's supposed to be completed on 25th of, of January. That's the dependency. So I want to subtract 12 days, 12 working days. So I need to start this task on the 7th of January. Okay. So that's how I set up the start. Finish is very similar, only with the workday with the plus. So finish is checking if there's a manual input. If it is, take that. If not, look for a finish, um, an auto finish. And if not, take the auto start and add the uh, net duration. That was the, let's say, the most complicated part of building this. 
Then you have the gross duration that gives you the days between the two, and you can notice that there's the difference in most of the cases, it's just the weekends in between. So there's five working days and two weekends. So that's this part with the auto schedule. Can't required. What is required? Required, you're looking for what is the day that you are in, whether it's being today or some sort of day that you pull in, minus when you need to start, divided by the duration. And I'm adding here a minimum of one and this number, because I don't want to reach more than one in you know certain cases. Um, and also a max of zero. Just the max and the min make sure that this number is between zero to one. That's all that it does. Because there are some cases where it will, ex will uh, expand. You see in this case, the required is probably more than 100%, which doesn't make sense. So this is the required column. This column is the status column. So what it does, if C7 is equal to one, meaning it's flagged as 100% complete, I'm going to call it as done. Otherwise, if I have a duration, just this is just going to help you if you want to drag this formula to empty cells, but this is not required. Anyway, I'm looking for um, the uh, the value. All right, so it's what's completed minus what's required, and meaning that's the gap between them. And I'm looking here for the range, which is what I set up here. And I'm using VLOOKUP with the um, estimated value, that last parameter, not the, I don't put here zero, I put one, and that's why it gives me the uh, closest value in descending order, and that's why I set it up this way. So basically what this tells you is that if you're, let's say between a very huge range of negative up until minus 15%, it's going to be shown as off track, between minus, minus 15 and minus 5 it's late, between minus 5 and plus 10 it's on schedule and if it's over 10 percent it's ahead of schedule and you can play with these numbers as you want to set it up and it will affect the status so for example you see I should have been at uh, 100 percent I'm at 90 percent which is negative 10 and that's the area of late between minus 15 and minus 5 here I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be at 7 I'm at 15%, which is 8% above, that's why it's showing on schedule. Ahead of schedule, for example, I should have been at 11%, I'm at 80. So it shows you ahead of schedule. Um, and for what's done, you can see that um, also this part is great. So the, so the uh, conditional formatting is, there's a lot of conditional formatting over here, but you can see for these lines, it's looking for whether or not um, C7 is equal to 1, and if, if so, paint it in gray, just so it's clear that these are completed and you do not need to mine them. Of course, you can always filter lines, but this is just kind of hard, kind of easy to see. Um, moving on, so the progress showing you over here and here you have a, a small GAN chart that shows you um, the uh, the breakdown of those tasks you can click here on this button and it's going to show you the breakdown by day and you can see that all the days that are related to the tasks are going to be colored in the color of the task status. So done is in gray, uh, laid yellow, green for on schedule, red for off track, and light green for ahead of schedule. 
and Saturday and Sunday are painted in black just so it's clear and I've added grouping just if you want to see um, this in weeks sometimes it's easier to see in weeks if you have a longer project and you just see right away the status it only shows you the status for Monday so for in this case this is a very short task you don't see it you do see it if you open its breakdown so all the color coding is just conditional formatting okay so if it's out of schedule for example so just fill it Okay, each one has its own um, color. Only difference is these ones in the Gantz, I don't want to see the text. So I also added that. Sorry, let's take a look at this one. I also added that the font would be the same color. And if I didn't show you, it's this formula is very simple if the uh, the date is between these two dates then it's equal to the status otherwise you should leave it as blank so basically you have here uh, if I take this out you would see the word done so this is pretty much the basics of what you can do with this sheet and of course you can just add and to add I recommend always to copy let's say add let's say get uh, I don't know purchase something and just once you set this one these up it will work so for example here I don't want uh, something with dependency I'm just gonna write it as start on the t 10th of February and 10 days and here I'm going to use the function work day and then you can see it's on schedule or you know what let's just show you so it shows me off track and you can see that if I take it to 35% it's late, if I take it to 37% it's still late, 39, okay, on schedule, and 50, or sorry, 75 will show me as a schedule, and everything changes accordingly. So this is how you can add lines. And of course you can take this and build much more, you can add resources, you can add uh, reports or dashboards this is just a very basic um, project management uh, template um, that you can use and actually it's a pretty good one that you that you can use <laughs> so if you like this video I'd be happy if you could schedule if you could subscribe leave a like share a comment uh, of course if you want the template just shoot shoot an email and I'll send it over um, that's it take care Hope you enjoyed the video.